Oh, yeah. Good evening, folks. What is it, Wednesday? In? Wednesday. We're here live and live tomorrow night. And then Friday, uh, we're playing a best of. I will be at the uh, Ridgefield Playhouse Friday night. Ridgefield, Connecticut. Great gig. Great venue. Come on out if you're in the area. I'd appreciate it. Getting close to sold out. Which is exciting. One of my favorite gigs. I uh, eat a bag of Cheetos and have six Heineken lights. And then I go on stage and I just... Rip the tits off the audience. Know what I'm saying, yo? How's it going? Hey, big victory for Roy Moore. Who's Roy Moore? You know who Roy Moore is. He was that judge. Remember the Ten Commandments? They wanted to take him off his wall in Alabama and whatnot. And uh, he's a real right wing, real conservative. And Trump picked the other guy, Luther Strange, backed him. And this guy, this Roy Moore dude... He was the former, I think he was the chief justice of the Supreme Court in Alabama. And um, he's a real, real right wing. Conser- and I love it. Not that I'm that conservative. We just need that. After eight years of Chooch, eight years of the Mamaluke, eight years of Barack Obama and his strong safety of a wife. <laughs> we have to balance. We got to swing the pendulum back the other way. So President Trump picked their wrong horse in this one, but it doesn't matter because this guy loves Trump. This guy's a Trump backer, and so it doesn't really hurt the president. But uh, you know why I love it? Because guys like Mitch McConnell and all those swamp creatures put up a ton of money into Roy Moore's opponent's campaign, and they got their asses handed. They got their asses handed to him by a real redneck, and I love it. I love it. Yes, sir. So, uh, have you seen this guy, uh, Sebastian Gorker? He was the former uh, deputy assistant to President Trump for about a month. You know, the guy with the goatee, he's got an accent. Real bright guy. You see him on TV a lot. He was being interviewed by Steve Bannon, who should be the president, by the way. And uh, Raheem Kassam, who's a very uh, brilliant guy. And uh, they were talking, Gorker said, this is a revolutionary victory. As far as, you know. Politics goes on this kind. I don't know if he's wrong or right. I think this whole elitist globalism thing is just a giant tidal wave that can't be stopped. But I think we can stick a finger in the dike. Didn't Tony Montana said a finger in the dike, man. Remember? But uh, we can try to slow it down. <laughs> but he's all excited, Gawker. He was on uh, Bannon, Bannon's show. Sirius XM. Is he in the building? Does it from D.C., I bet, right? Yeah, he used to be. He used to be here? Mm-hmm. Where is he now? Got to be down in D.C. Can cause... we get him in here or to call in? I know he knows who I am. We will try. Could you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounded really fucking convincing. Well, Can't even get David Tellen here. I'm asking for Steve Bannon. Your sister's tits. <laughs> you know, I fucking hate the way you make me fucking ride you. Now get the fuck out of here. It was among the Italians. It was real greaseball shit. <laughs> we find that funny because it's Andy Fiore and Nick DiPaolo having a tit for tat. But Gorka says it's the first battle in a war that's going to reform politics. He said to uh, Bannon, I know you like the word nationalism, but I'm not even satisfied with the more gentle word populism. For me, it's a reassertion of sovereignty and reassertion of democracy where the wishes of the people are actually expressed in a way that the money and the influence of the establishment totally fails. And that's a good point. Like I said, Mitch McConnell, that chinless motherfucker and his ilk put like 30 million. They spent five times the money this guy did. Roy Moore wins. And the night before, I thought he read he was down by six points. So it's a it's a uh, it's a good thing because the people spoke and they rejected that DC horse shit. That's the beauty of this show. You get a little politics, some nice cursing. You don't hear uh, you don't hear Charlie Rose saying that. Now listen, you motherless fucks. <laughs> You're listening to PBS. All things considered, we're talking to Doctor Lavelle Sheen of the AIDS Institute and. I had a whole bit about that. You know who listens to PBS? I go, big, ugly, fat bros with giant muffs on Friday night that can't get laid, and they sit there and they cry. <laughs> I actually said that on a special, and I wonder why I see so is the best I can do. Boop! But, uh, yes, 
Bannon asked Corker how tough the, that war to reform politics was, like, was likely to become. Corker responded by quoting a comment that Steve Bannon himself made at the PAC uh, conference. Would, uh, Bannon said, if you think that swamp is going to give back our nation without a fight, then you're sorely mistaken, which is a good point. It, you know what I mean? And Gorka says, uh, after my month in the White House, I need the listeners to understand this isn't just about the lobbyists. It's not just about the people on Capitol Hill. The swamp, I don't like the phrase deep state. I like the phrase permanent state. It's also largely about the bureaucrats who just think they know better than anybody else. Exactly. F them. Again, I have this silly notion that this government is for by the people. I know that's kind of a... Uh, I'm not going to talk about Puerto Rico, so you can hang up, Stephen Oregon. I don't give two shits about Puerto Rico. 866-969-1969, unless he wants to talk about something else. 866-969-1969. I'm talking about Roy Moore's big victory over Luther Strange. (laughs) Luther Vandross. (laughs) What are you laughing at, Luther Strange? I feel like that's a Batman character. Luther Strange. With that exact name. Dr. Strange. Right. Is it? Brand, Brendan's going to weigh in here. The minute you Hugo say, Strange. Hugo Dr. Strange. There you go. See that? <laughs> this is why they see those. Now, those guys, I would have never known either one of them. They both, they both combined brains to bring up a really mediocre point. But uh, <laughs> who gives a rat's ass? 866 969 1960. Let me hear from some of you people who think maybe I think uh, it's just a pipe dream, this whole nationalist populist thing. It's going to go away. Is uh, We can't stop this global wave, these elitist. Um, a holes who who know better than you. I think it's pretty exciting, and I think the reaction to the NFL protests is another sign that guys like Roy Moore might carry the day. Am I wrong, folks? Apparently, nobody gives a rat's ass. So the phone's on. I can't. I can't talk. I'm tired. I had a tough day today. I ate two ghost peppers and spent the rest of the day on the toilet. You guys know what a ghost pepper is? We'll talk about that. Oh, wait, wait, two. You can't even... Two, I couldn't... If you touched it right. with your tongue, you'd be at the hospital. You have to wear gloves. My wife grew 50 of these. I don't know what she's trying to tell me. <laughs> I ate a couple of scotch bonnets. I had to have a fire extinguisher shoved in my mouth. <laughs> what kind of talk is that for a political show? Well, that's the beauty of this show. If you don't like it, you're dead inside. Anyways... So uh, I'm happy about Roy Moore. All I know is he's an Alabaman, and the Alabama people said, fuck you, Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan, and all the rest he is. So he's, uh, he's, uh, if he's excited, I'm excited. You know what he says? I think the biggest thing of all, Steve, he was talking to Ben, is how everybody saw the primary yesterday as November the 8th happening again. We are sending the same message to Washington, to the swamp, that we are not going to allow them to get away with it. I think it was just that positive attitude. That is the revolutionary event uh, is going to continue. It's not just one race. It's a larger war to cleanse the system. Let's see if uh, let's see if that's true. I personally, look, I was voted class pessimist. I see this global wave in the elites, and I don't know if it's stoppable. You know what I mean? But I might be wrong. Remember the UK, the election over there and leaving the union. And so I might be wrong, but uh, I'm a negative Nelly, as you might say. <laughs> but he loves it because they stuck it to the, uh, Rep- the Republican establishment. They took it right on the chin, you know, and Trump's fine. He, Trump picked the wrong guy. But he, you know what? Like I said, both the guys are like Trump backers. So he's not losing any skin here. <laughs> That's right. This guy pulled a, I'll get to the calls in a second, but Roy Moore pulled a gun out on stage. Come on. How do you not like that, folks? How do you not like that? Okay. Oh, my God. He should have rode in on a horse on stage and actually shot the thing through the roof. He pulled a gun out. Can you imagine the liberal jerk-offs that live on the Upper West Side when they saw that? Oh, my God. They probably ran into the kids' room and said, get under the bed. Crazy white men are going crazy in the country. Alan Alda must shit his pants. I feel guilty saying that because I actually met him and liked him. But 
Uh, by the way, thank you, uh, Timothy Yule, for your contribution to my podcast. If you want to sign up, go to connectpal.com slash nick, connectpal.com slash nick. Three ninety nine a month, you get five shows a week. And uh, they're terrific. And people are still signing up, believe it or not, even after I took this radio gig. So uh, kiss my grits. But the podcast is based on the radio show now. So a few people who don't have serious, and you're saying, well, how will they hear this? Well, maybe they're sitting in a car next to their fat friend who does have serious. Why is he going to be frat? Frat? Mark Norman tomorrow night. Southern boy. Love him. Funny, and I know he loves my politics. Yes, he do. Yeah, he do. So, yes, uh, Russell Moore. Russell, did I just say Russell Moore? Where did I get Russell Moore? <laughs> was he a defensive back for Seahawks? <laughs> I I got Roy Moore. Roy Moore pulled a gun out on stage. That's Americana, folks. Would you rather have it pulled out on you on a, in a bodega in New York City? Chicago. I'll be doing that story, too. About the statistics on who's killing who, what color the cops are, what color the criminals are, and how misled the NFL protests are. Heather McDonald wrote a book, and she's been pushing it for a year, with all the facts and numbers that you really can't argue with if you want to be an adult and be rational about it. And uh, white cops should be more scared than anybody, basically, is what I took from it. But it makes uh, the, 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 the nailing thing just silly. No. Um, they can do it, but it just looks silly if you know the facts. <sighs> Let's go to uh, Nick in Boston. How can I not go to Nick in Boston? I'm Nick from Boston, for the love of Christ. Nick from Boston. Welcome to the show. Hey, Nick. It's Nick. How are you? What's up, Nick? <laughs> What's up, Nick? Hey, so, yeah. I was, uh, first of all, I was in Saugus earlier. It's a dump. Second of all. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, second of all, the NFL protest is, um, first of all, it's their freedom of speech to do whatever they want. We're not talking about that, Nick. We're not talking about that right now. You just said earlier that you could bring up co- topics about that. No, I didn't. I said I'm going to get to oh. it. But, but Oh, but, but what go- time should I call back? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking wise ass. How about never? No, go ahead. Say what you're going to say. Go ahead. It's freedom of speech, but they have to accept the repercussions of their actions. That's right. Uh, I no longer watch any NFL games. I don't know about anybody else. Everybody's burning their jerseys. I think they're going to uh, suffer a huge downfall because of this. It may not, the NFL may not go away, whatever. Right. But there, there will be there will be some consequences to these actions. And these overpaid crybabies I, who are protected, that freedom of speech is protected by men in uniform who take offense to this stuff, don't understand what it means to give up everything in your life to fight for your country, and then just get shit on by somebody who wants to, oh, I want to kneel down. What's Colin Kaepernick? Who's he playing for right now? I, I, I couldn't remember. He showed his he true, he showed his true colors when, when, when he, he did that. And then when people started to show interest in him again, like Pete Carroll took a look at him and then they interviewed him. He said, I'm not going to, I won't be doing that anymore. Taking any. So he, he showed his true colors, Kaepernick. Um, and, 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 and this turned, it, this turned into a, uh, an anti-Trump protest. These fucking guys, they have the brothers on the sideline. They don't even know why they're locking arms or kneeling down. And it, you know, if they don't, they're going to be called an uncle Tom and shit. And yes, there are a few whiteies that had to go along with it but uh they're looking they're looking for a reason to like kathy griffin she was looking for a way to make herself more famous because she was dying you know her her career is in the tank yeah she was looking for a way to get in the limelight again and that's all these nfl players are doing so just stop going to the game stop going and putting money in robert kratz Kraft's pocket and you know spending 15 dollars for a beer let's see yeah well we'll see we'll see i mean their ratings are down 11 percent, and I, I tend to agree with you and i was talking about this roy moore winning down in alabama and it sort of relates to this it's sort of backing the people have had enough of this anti-american horse shit and there's a segment of this population that just hates this fucking country and they call fucking white and we, liberals we, and a big a large swath of black people what then then leave there's no reason for them to stay here there's if socialism is so great, why don't they check out Venezuela? They don't want to leave, Nick, because then they'll be oh. a victim of this country's foreign policy. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, Nick, thanks. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Take it easy. You're welcome. He goes, Saugus is a shithole. <laughs> uh, it made me laugh. It's not far from Regra. My old girlfriend uh, lived in Saugus. And... I remember. Do you really? Is that after you quit banging boys? 
<laughs> oh, for the love of Christ. <laughs> Let's go to Steve in Louisiana. He likes Roy Roy Moore's style. Steve, what did you think of him pulling out that? Uh, what did he pull out, by the way? I think it was some little, uh, like a 38 special. You look like 38. <laughs> nothing, nothing too crazy. <laughs> I love how <laughs> it was just a 30. But you got to love, I, I, I love the, come on, it's America. Yeah, I mean, my thought is, well, every liberal I know stops reading the Constitution after, like, one they just went, oh, you can do whatever you want. You can be in the middle of open heart surgery, but you got to pray to Mecca that poor son of a bitch dies on the table. We're like, oh, well, no, he had to exercise his, his religious rights. Right. But, you know, when you have a gun to blow away these jerk offs that are out here robbing everybody, they're like, whoa, we need, I think the guns are the problem. Yeah. It's like, yeah. They're, they're really wrong in everything, Steve, when you think about it. <laughs> it's backwards. It feels that way. They, they really are. They're fucking way. wrong about race. They're wrong about taxes. They're wrong about pretty much fucking everything about, uh, you know, bathrooms. And they, they, they just fucking, I really do believe. I, I used to laugh when people said oh, liberalism was a mental illness. I'm really starting to believe that. They, they need to be loved. They need to be, hey, look, I'm morally superior. Uh, they need to be fucking loved when they should be hated. <laughs> yeah, love you, Nick. All right, Stevie boy. Thanks for the call. See you. Roy Moore. <laughs> he had the Ten Commandments. Remember they wanted him to take him out of his courtroom or whatever, and he said, kiss my grits. Right? Is that right, Brendan? I always, anytime I'm doing a story south of the Mason-Dixon, I always look over to not even, Kentucky's not even that south, is it? It's right fucking next to Cincinnati, which is, <laughs> I always, yeah, Kentucky, you always in way to, you know. Russell in Houston. What's going on, Russell? You have a quote? Hey, Nick. What did Nick Steve? Fan. Thank you, brother. Uh, I saw uh, Steve Bannon. I agree with you. Steve Bannon should be our president. I, I love him. I do, too. But um, Steve Bannon had an interesting quote today, kind of almost like feuding with Trump. He said, I'm now 6-0 and winning these special elections while Trump is 5-1. and I thought that was kind of kind of interesting thing for him to say. <laughs> who, who said that? Bannon? that. Bannon? Yeah, Bannon said that. It was either last night or this morning I read it in the paper. Yeah, but you know what? I, you know what I do like, Russell? I mean, I was sad to see Bannon go, but he can do, like he said, he can do more damage outside the White House, you know? Yeah, I mean, he's extremely effective wherever you put him, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got to believe yeah. he's, uh, he's a very bright guy, and I would have loved to have him. Um, but he's smart, you know? I think uh, the constraints of being the president and... Uh, Having to represent everybody, kind of, uh, but uh, I think he's more dangerous now that they cut him loose. So, um, you know. All righty. Thank you, Russell. Yeah, thanks. Have a good one. You got it. <laughs> Mike in Ohio. What's going on, Mike? Hey, Nick. I uh, just wanted to comment. Um, you know, remember a few years back, um, we sort of saw this resentment against the, the ruling class that Occupy Wall Street. And where did that go, right? You know, sort of flamed out. And, you know, you look at Trump, who he put around him, you know, uh, Goldman Sachs executives, Wall Street CEO. Yeah. I, I just see it flaming out, you know. I, I, I think the, the fire's there, but, you know, it's just going to burn out in the end. You think, so you think the establishment, establishment is going to win out? Absolutely. Um, I mean, you just got to look at who Trump surrounds himself with. You know, he, he talked a, a smart game, and people, you know, responded. You know, that he pulled the upset over Hillary. But yep. you look at who the guy surrounds himself with, and it's the same old, right? Uh, yes and no, but uh, you know, I look, you, you, I, I look at uh, the fact that he hooked up with Bannon to get elected. So. Um, but yeah, no, I, I get your point. It, it, it's definitely going to be, it's, uh, but I think like, you know, this, this Roy Moore thing was, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a bright spot that we're not completely dead, you know, yeah. but, uh, well, oh, absolutely. well, yeah, I was, uh, I was a little, I, I, I was a little, uh, surprised myself. So, uh, we, we shall see, but the Mitch McConnell's Mike, don't you agree? The Mitch McConnell's of the world, don't they have to go the fuck away? Oh, God, Mitch McConnell. I mean, talking about dating out of your class. Uh, <laughs> I think I get that wife, right? <laughs> I know. What is, what's he, is that, wait a minute, is his, is it the Asian? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Elaine Chow, yeah. Uh, the, Elaine the, Chow, yeah. The yeah what? of transportation, yeah. I would I'd pay. Some <laughs> <laughs> she said, I, I like a man with no chin and giant fucking glasses. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
I like a, that's actually a funny joke because she's Asian. I throw a chin in there. What? <laughs> All right, Mike. Thanks. Take care. So Mike says, uh, sort of feels like me. The establishment is, a, you know, it's a title. But you know what? It's got to start somewhere. And a guy pulling a gun out on stage. I kind of like that. I think he's serious. <laughs> Let's go to Kent in South Carolina. What's up, Kent? Hey, what's up, Nick? Uh, hey, um, I, I was just wondering what you thought about uh, what Trump should do about old Rocket Man. With the, if you think we could take him out with like a few special forces units or drop a bomb over that. You can't, the you can't, you can't, you can't drop. I sort of agree with Bannon on this one. You can't. There's no military solution because if you do that, you do anything like that. He's they're going to wipe out Seoul, Korea, and fucking Guam and all our all our allies. That oh, yeah. were, you know what I mean? So. Uh, it's a touchy situation, but yeah, I'd send a couple Navy SEAL. I might even call Putin and go, what, what's that shit you're putting uh, journalist T? You know, that type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be something like that. You know what I mean? Send him a fucking, in, send, him a, uh, some, send him a foot long from fucking Subway laced with yeah, the. I was about to say, put it in his fucking milkshake or whatever. Put it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Guy fucking, oh, that fat little zip ahead. Fuck him and everything he believes in. <laughs> All right, Ken. Thanks. Uh, thanks, sir. <laughs> How do we get on North Korea? I'm trying to keep the trains on the track here, folks. It's a dangerous combination. <laughs> Roy Bob, pull out a gun. Christopher, he's at the hospital. The nurse goes, he f- he fell off the counter while he was dusting for ants. <laughs> That's the excuse <laughs> he used. It's the greatest written show ever. <laughs> Let's go to Greg in Wyoming. Greggy boy, what's happening? Hi, hey, not much, Nick. What's going on, man? I don't know. What are you in a wind tunnel? I can hardly hear you, fella. Talking to the mouthpiece. Oh, God damn. <laughs> yeah, take me off speaker pump. Hi there. Is that better? Yeah. Sorry to put you through that. <laughs> no. Hey, I don't think it matters who you elect anymore because they all turn crooked once they get to Washington. Well, yeah, but see, we're trying to change that. That's what <laughs> we, 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 you know, you, you got to change it. And um, some people turn more crook, crooked quicker than others. You know, like Hillary Clinton and the his. The <laughs> well, she was crooked before she got there. That's the yeah, fuck? exactly. But the you know the, the fucking you know I, I I like this Roy Moore. This guy uh, you know pulls a gun out on stage. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we need more of that. I would like to see Trump come out and give a State of the Union. He lays a rifle across the podium. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but I get your point. Yeah, you, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, whatever that saying is. Exactly. Yeah, so man, you, hey, you're love, right. Love the show, man. Keep it up. Thank man. you. Thank you, Greg. I love hearing from Wyoming. I hate to be stereotypical. Every time I see Wyoming, I picture a guy, it's like the sun's going down. He's driving back to the house on his track. They're calling me. I love it. Letterman's got like a nice spread. Is it Wyoming? I, always I think, think it is Or Wyoming. is it Montana? Oh, maybe you're right. I think it's Montana. But if I had dough, you know, let it, let, they're like Oprah and Letterman. They literally go out and they buy like a couple hundred thousand acres. Can you imagine? You can drive on your own property for an hour and a half and not even hit the... Oh, goodness uh, gracious. That's called private property. That's Americana. Let's <laughs> let's take uh, one more. Let's go to Brian in Staten Island, one of the most beautiful islands in the uh, Pacific. Brian, your thoughts? Nikki, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing all right. What's up, Brian? Before you get angry at me, let's go Sopranos first. One of the first <laughs> episodes. I think it's uh, AJ's confirmation, maybe. Yeah. And something something happens to Livia, and uh, the party might be canceled. And AJ goes, "What? No fucking no, ziti now? No fucking ziti? Ah, yeah. Right in front of the priest? Oh, it's fantastic! <laughs> that was one of the that was one of the early lines that made me love that show. Okay, now you're gonna hate me. No, I'm not. You don't like Roy Moore. I understand. I just don't get it. I understand wanting change. Yeah, but this guy's a birth. He's a birther. Number one. Number two, so what? He refers to homosexuality as sodomy. He refers to sodomites on the bench. That's what they do. They fuck each other in the ass. They're sodomites. But you understand the implication. Yeah, it's real dangerous. Almost eight percent of the population is gay. 
So we offend it's a them. Dangerous big deal. It's a dangerous It's a dangerous situation. <laughs> no, the dangerous implication. <laughs> Uh, who cares? You've been in New York too long. Quit worrying about hurting gay people's feelings, for Christ's sake. It's refreshing. I'm not as conservative as Roy Moore. I'm just trying to swing the pendulum back after the Marxist cocksucker who was in office for eight years took it far left. All right. I love you anyway. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> That's why you got to love New York. He might be the only guy that leans left on Staten Island. Usually it's Joey and Tony calling me. Nice God, I love that show. All right. 866-969-1969. When I get back, let's talk about, why don't we talk about the truth about the, uh, the, 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 you know, the protests and the NFL and stuff. But we'll give you real members. Uh, Heather McDonald wrote a great, great book based on FBI statistics that just came out. And who should be really worried about white cops? Back after this. Black Betty, bam a lama. Black Betty, bam a lama. Black Betty had a child. Bam a lama, damn thing run wild. Bam a lama. Money in half. Welcome back. Segment two. On a Wednesday, folks. 866 969 1969. Hit a number. Tomorrow night, Mark Norman joins us. One of my favorite comics. Smart, funny, Louisiana boy. And, uh, yeah, it'll be a good time. Anyways, Heather McDonald. She's always uh, on TV. She, she wrote a book about, you know, how the whole, uh, the whole concept of white cops shooting young, unarmed black men was basically horseshit. If you look at the numbers and the statistics. Um, so... She wrote a piece uh, in a paper today that said all that kneeling, meaning the NFL protest, ignores the real cause of soaring black homicide. The FBI released its official crime tally for 2016 on Monday, and the uh, data flies in the face of the uh, rhetoric that professional athletes rehearsed and revived Black Lives Matter protests over the weekend, meaning the the whole uh, you know the whole uh, NFL. Please, don't you move, you motherfucker. I'll blow your brains out. Nearly 900 additional, I stress the word additional, blacks were killed in 2016 compared with 2015, bringing the black homicide victim total to 7881. Those 7881 black bodies in the uh, parlance of Ta Nishi Coates are 1,305 more than the number of white victims which in this case includes most Hispanics for the same period, uh, though blacks are only 30% of the nation's population. The increase in black homicides last year comes on top of a previous 900 victim increase between 2014 and 2015. Who's killing these black victims? Not whites and not the police, but other black people. And um, this is what should be, if you're going to protest something or get upset about something, this is what you should be drawing attention to. Or am I wrong? You can't handle the truth. In 2016, the police fatally shot 233 blacks, the vast majority armed and dangerous, according to the Washington Post, that real right-leaning paper. (laughs) The paper categorized only 16 black male victims of police shootings as unarmed. That classification masks assaults against officers and violent uh, resistance to arrest. They don't, they don't, they don't break the, see, they don't break, they don't go that far with the details when they put these numbers out. They just want a bunch of white cops, Uh, Contrary to Black Lives Matter narrative, the police have uh, much more to fear from black males than black males have to fear from the police. In 2015, a police officer was 18 and a half times more likely to be killed by a black male than an unarmed black male was to be killed by a police officer. Oh, goodness. What are those? Sounds like facts. Sounds like Black Lives Matter is a bunch of horseshit and was founded on a bunch of fucking horseshit. Why do I have a southern accent when I said that? What the fuck? Wake up, white people. Oh, shut it. Rednecker. <laughs> uh, black males have made up 42% of all cop killers over the last decade, though they are only 6% of the population. 
The 18 and a half ratio undoubtedly worsened in 2016 in light of the 53 percent increase in gun murders of officers committed vastly and disproportionately by black males. Among all homicide suspects whose race was known, white killers, uh, white killers of black numbered only 243. The reason for the current increase is what I've called the Ferguson effect. They're talking about uh, black on black crime killing each other. Uh, the, the Ferguson effect. Cops are backing off proactive policing in high crime minority neighborhoods and criminals are becoming emboldened. Um, you know, cops like, I'm not getting out of the car. I'm fucking, they're going to make me personally responsible now and then the media is going to hang me. So why would you? Why would you? You know who brought that to light first about, you know, white cops working in like in black neighborhoods at midnight in, in, in the worst parts of the city? Mark Furman, right after the OJ thing. Remember he said that on the stand? He's fucking wor- working in South Central at three in the morning because he hates black people, protecting black people from black people. That was a great point. So much so that Oprah actually had him on the show many times, like right after. Yeah. Oh, Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Brendan, you weren't even born, were you? Brent- were you <laughs> for the OJ thing? No, but I saw the uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. version. You saw what? I saw that Cuba Gooding Jr. TV movie they made. Oh, okay, yeah. So eight six six nine six nine nineteen sixty nine, and that's all. My point is, if you're going to protest and and draw awareness, NFL Roger Goodell, fucking Robert Kraft, and anybody else, if you're going to draw awareness to something, how about that? And again, we I said this before. It starts with the dissolution of the black family. It really is. If you don't have a father figure, you're going to fucking run wild or one parent or whatever, whether, regardless of what color. But nobody wants to address that. And you do your bigot. So good night, everybody. Show's been canceled. <laughs> Eight, 866-969-1969. But this Heather McDonald, I love it. She's, I remember O'Reilly had her on like three times, you know, with her, with her book. It's just based on FBI facts and and I'm sure uh, there'll be a few black people going, those are white figures. You can't be trusting FBI facts. <laughs> Maybe they got a point. Um, yeah, so, you know, having, talking about cops, have, she says, having been told incessantly by politicians, the media, and Black Lives Matter activists that they are bigoted for getting out of their cars and questioning someone loitering on a known drug corner at 2 a.m., many offices are just staying in the car, 72% of the nation's officers say that they and their colleagues are now less willing to stop and question suspicious persons, according to Pew Research Poll, released in January of this year. So there's an anti-cop climate, basically, that really came to... I noticed it really flourished under the last president. What was his name? He's a point guard from... <laughs> Four studies came out in 2016 alone rebutting the charge that police shootings are racially biased. Remember, one of them was from Harvard. It was a Harvard one that came out that said it's it's, it's bunch of baloney. Harvard! <laughs> not DeVry, folks. Not Albany State. I'm trying to think of some more. Not Utah State, not BYU. Fucking... If there's a bias in police shootings, it works in favor of blacks and against whites. That truth has not stopped the ongoing demonization of the police, including now by many of the country's ignorant professional athletes, which they are dumber than a bag of hammers. I love them. I I love the NFL. I love the 866-969-1969. These are the facts, folks. So you can kneel all you want. And again, I've been saying it's a ruse. It's a fucking con game. The L. Sharptons of the world and the Jesse Jacksons have been perpetuating it and any other white liberal Frank Riches of the world, the fucking Adam's Apple on MSNBC. How about they Brian Williams? They do they they when MSNBC shows a commercial and and they're touting their lineup. Imagine put, having the gall to show Brian Williams' face. Fucking liar! Can you imagine? By the way, Hannity crushed her, crushed her little penis into a fine powder. Sean Hannity did at nine o'clock. He's back at nine now. He's going head to head with the Adam's Apple. Eight six six nine six nine nineteen sixty nine. Anybody got an opinion? Are you afraid to weigh in about the real truth about cop shootings? And again, the real tragedy is the uh, black on black crime. I mean, little kids in Chicago, and it's just horrific. You read this stuff? 
It's horrific. That's the, that's what they should be drawing attention to. They don't even bring it up, though. They don't even bring it up because there's so much political capital to be gained by labeling Trump a white supremacist. And it's been working for so long. Yes, there are some shitty cops out there. We all know that. There's about eight out of 8,000. Eight six six nine six nine nineteen sixty nine is the phone number. Let's go to our friend uh, Sal in Staten Island. Sal, what's up? Hey Nick, that was fucking quick. That was awesome. Hey man, uh, this is uh, you're my favorite show ever. I'm so happy to talk to you. Thank you, Sal. All right, uh, hey man, I met you like uh, when you were on Free FM. I came out to some show that you were like promoting some fucking hipster band with like tight leather jackets and shit, wearing a green <laughs> sweatshirt. <laughs> And I was like, hey, man, are you performing tonight? This is before I was sobering. I had to stand up comedy. And you were like, no, nah, man, I'm not. But this is a real honor, man. This is awesome. You know what, Sal? I, I, that's when I had the free FM show, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah and, uh, I, it, I, it's, it's crazy. Last time I tried to call you asking about gambling stories, and I opened up for Florentine in Atlantic City and lost a shit ton of my money and tried getting on while I was delivering pizzas as a second job. <laughs> You know, my white privilege and all. Yeah, I get exactly. To, uh, I get exactly. To, I get to build the Gothel's Bridge by day, run out at night, deliver pizzas, and then try to do stand-up comedy in this fucking city. But, you know, I have white privilege. No, exactly. Everybody's handing everything. You didn't build that bridge. I am building that bridge. Fuck you, Obama. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. You know what else I built? The New World Trade Center. Obama, I did build that. Yeah, there you go. So Anyway, I'm, yeah. I, know, I know you like quick calls. I don't mean to take up too That's much all right. time. That's all right. That's all right. So anyway, I'm a stand-up comic. Uh, I've been hanging with Mike Bichetti a lot lately. He's on my podcast every week. Really great guy. And uh, I, uh, I was you. talking to him the other day yeah. about how you're, my, how you're on my favorite show. Yeah. And he was like, Nick DiPaolo said one of the greatest things. Now, I'm in Harlem, mind you, tonight at the Harlem Comedy Festival. And uh, one of the things when you want to go up, because I'm a conservative like you, one of the things when you say something and the crowd might take it right, he said one day Nick DiPaolo went, somebody went like in the crowd, and you went, that's the sound of truth sticking to your ass, honey. One of the greatest things. <laughs> I can't remember if I said it or not. I had a lot of drinks every time I went on stage for many years, so maybe I did. <laughs> you know, anyway, so I'm, I'm going to get to the to the beaten potatoes of my story. Oh, so, Jesus this Christ. This is my first, last night. Naruto glad you, glad you don't want to take up much of my time, Sal. What the <laughs> fuck? Get to it, will you? I'm sorry. Nick, I'm sorry, man. This, uh, this is a big deal. I'm talking to my hero. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, anyway, so... Uh, yeah, I, uh, Neruda Williams through the hall. Wake up, oh, white people. What's that? What? Go ahead. Anyway, Neruda Williams through the Harlem Comedy Festival. I got accepted. I came out here as a straight white male, conservative, hardworking Trump supporter. Anyway, I get out here last night, and, uh, you know, I was, I was a little scared. I'd never been to Harlem before, all right? The only thing I ever saw in Harlem was Bruce Willis walking through with that sign in Die Hard 3. So my wife is like, you're racist. You realize that because you're worried about something uh, because of whatever. So I get here, though, and I'm like, it's not so bad. I work with black people all day. It's gonna Sal, be Sal, get, get, Sal, get to your fucking point. I got 19 calls uh, waiting. All right, I'm sorry. So I, I get into the place, all right? It's called the Shrine in Harlem. I'm there five minutes. And some woman walked up and brushed me at the bar, and I thought I took her seat. So I said, hey, is this your seat? And she goes, no, but you don't belong here, but you are taking over. And I was like, oh, shit, that's what that feels like. You don't belong here, but you are taking over? Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's what racism feels like, I guess, bitch. Like, that's what I get for being nice and going, hey, is this your seat? What color, no courtesy. What color was the woman? Nick, what do you think? I don't know. I'm, picking, I'm picturing a, a Asian girls, about six foot. No, Nick. No, Nick. She was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for your time. Listen to the slant on iTunes. I'm sorry, Jimmy. That's what you remind me. Jimmy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen to the what on iTunes? I know. I cut it off. Good for you. Jesus, I'm Sal. Sorry, Jimmy. I like Sal. I'm glad he called in, but Christ sakes. You got to get to the point. Listen, it's like Eat of the Bunker telling a story. <laughs> Wasn't it? Ron from New York has a question. What the race stats look like in other countries? They're very, very dark. Ron? Say homo, say what? What up? What up, Ronnie? <laughs> what is so... Ron's a big girl. He's a little girl. He's a little girl. 
Let's go to Brad in Oregon. Brad, uh, welcome to the show. Your thoughts on these statistics released by the FBI showing that white cops shooting unarmed black men is a crock of shit. Your thoughts, Brad? Oh, I, it's funny how um, they won't ever say, like, uh, you know, the black on black crime. They won't show those statistics or how many white people or brown or whatever are shot. But um, I was telling your screener, Nick, have you noticed, I've been saying this for a while, and I live in super liberal Portland, and yeah. I'm in traffic surrounded by Priuses and Subarus right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> have you noticed that, uh, maybe the last eight to ten years that being labeled as a racist or sexist or whatever is is worse than being like a, a child molester or murderer? Oh, Christ, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It used to be like a child molester or a thief or murdering somebody was used to be the worst crime that anybody could think of. Now, if you uh, kneel, you know, if you're racist, you, you should be hung at the stake. <laughs> yeah, no. It, 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 it again. What you're watching is forty or fifty years of the uh, lib media, mainstream media, um, pounding this this message and how horrible this country and it's taken fruition. Uh, uh, Obama came in and watered the plant, and it really grew about a foot. And and now you're seeing it come to fruition. You tell a lie enough times, it becomes the truth to dumb people. Yep. And 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 how about Brad? When people call, they throw around the term race. This is what really fries my fucking apples. They throw around the word racist, and and when when they do that, I go, Have you ever had a racist thought yourself, or ever uttered a racist word? And these motherfuckers have the balls to deny it. <laughs> these sanctimonious oh, bags their, of they'll shit. They'll put their hand on their chest and take a deep breath and go, oh, how dare you think of that of me? Yeah. No, exactly. They'd rather hang out with a child fucker than somebody who used the N-word. Nikki, I love you and keep it up. Thank you, Brad. Appreciate it. A lot of people love me out there. I like to know my numbers. Can we get some numbers from... Uh, Serious? I can move back to an hour where people are listening? <laughs> back to an hour where people are listening? <laughs> uh, it's, but this is a nighttime feel. I, this is a nighttime show. You know, I'm, I, I like it. I'm a comic. I'm a... What? What? Cigarette? I feel, yeah, I feel like we should be smoking cigarettes smoking, like Larry what? King. No. Why can't we? Can you smoke in here? Hello! Todd in Oregon! <laughs> Larry's got cancer, doesn't he? Or was I just hoping? Does he got it? I think he just survived another one. Oh, you can't kill this. Uh, he's one tough Jew. <laughs> Hello. I just came back from the bathroom. I took a bloody dump. Todd on line three, your thoughts. For my money. For my money, yellow is the best color. <laughs> Norm McDonald doing Larry King is the funniest thing I've ever seen. For my <laughs> The movie of the year, Gattaca. <laughs> he would turn, he's got the suspended. Of the year, Gattaca. He would turn, he's got the suspender, he would turn to the camera. For my money, yellow is the best color. <laughs> oh, back to the show. Look at the calls light up. Oh, for the love of Christ. Ah, let's go to our Frank in Chicago. We, we always get some good cop calls from Chicago. Frankie, what's going on? Hey, how are you doing? Long time uh, I, I can't, Frank, I can't hear you, man. You got to talk into the mouthpiece or take me off. Speak up phone, whatever. How about now? No. Go ahead. Okay, uh, long time fan. I've seen you every time you came to the Zayden and Rose one. Uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, made a lot of police and Trump. Frank, Frank, I'm sorry. We got a bad connection here. We, we can't hear anything. Sorry, Brad. And I know who he is. I think he he, he, he saw me in Rosemont. I think he's an actual cop. If you, um, maybe uh, go to a payphone on the corner of Fight the Power and Die Whitey Avenue and <laughs> That was one of my first jokes when I moved to New York. I go, people are complaining about the rents, how high the rents are. I go, I'm paying like five fifty a month. I got like 2,000 square feet. Of course, I'm on the corner of Fight the Power and Die Whitey Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> ah, for the love of Christ. Billy in South Carolina, welcome to the show, Bill. Your thoughts on uh, Heather McDonald's statistics from the FBI proving that uh, this whole thing, this whole this whole notion, and not completely, but uh, really blown out of proportion as far as, you know, hands up, don't shoot, and, and white cops just massacring young black guys. I mean, if you look at the numbers, it's, it's just not true, your thoughts. 
Yeah, I'd have to believe it. It is nothing but a bunch of uh, smoke and mirrors. And here you got, uh, you know, it, it's so easy for these folks to kick America in the balls. That's all they do. And, instead of going back and looking in their own neighborhoods to try to fix their own problem. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that's that really is the case, isn't it? I mean, is. Um, the reason that young black males have confrontations with cop, they're out on the street at three in the morning and you're going to go, now, why is that? Well, they probably don't have the right parental, which is true because of illegitimacy, right? So again, if you just trace this logically and, and that's the only way you get at the root of the problem, but we can't do that. You'll be labeled a bigot for some reason. I don't know. I don't even know why in this situation, but Dan, was it Daniel Patrick Moynihan back in the sixties? He did a thing called the dissolution of the black family and he was always right. Run out of the, run out of the uh, Senate. So uh, you're exact, you're, you're right, Bill. I mean, all these uh, all these fellows that make good money, why aren't they back in their own uh, community instead of sitting around, uh, you know, rabble rousing to uh, you know? And then the media doesn't help at all. No, they, they the media is they they've been throwing gas on this fire forever. And people always go, oh, they just need their rating. That's not why. They really have an agenda. They want to see. I don't. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, they they really fan the flames. Some of these guys, though, Bill. To be fair, there's a lot of guys from tough neighborhoods in the NFL that made it out of the projects that do go back and do a lot of good stuff for the community. But uh, it's hard to, to to pay attention to those guys when half the league is taking a knee during the national anthem. And there's, you know, there's rules in that uh, in the NFL about the the behavior during the national anthem. What's that? That the, that the teams are supposed the, the rules about it's, it's in the rule right. book, right? Right. Exactly what they're supposed to be doing: standing at attention, looking at the flag, not not uh, grab assing around. Yeah. No, you're right. There's a whole history on how how that started and stuff. It's really fascinating. Um, there was one guy. He was an owner, a baseball owner, was. Who, uh, no, it was a football on him. He he stopped playing the national anthem because he said people in the audience wouldn't they're, they're talking and up uh, you know being respectful, so he wouldn't play it, and he got a bunch of shit. But uh, thanks for the call, Billy. I appreciate it. Yes, sir, Mister Nick. Thank you. I like that commendatory, Mister Nick. Remember, remember walnuts over in Italy. <laughs> the guy goes commendatory. I like that. A command. Hey, you don't come around here no more, T. Hey, T. I'm going to hoof it back to the Excelsior. i got to take a wicked <laughs> shit. <laughs> like a 12-year-old boy. <laughs> oh, God. Mark in San Diego. What's up, Mark? A regular on the show, I believe. What's up, Nick? How you doing, man? Pretty good. All right. Hey, you're a little more well-versed on this stuff than me. Why is it that the uh, media as a whole, you know, doesn't push front page you know, 300 murders over the weekend here. How come you got to read a little blurb about it? What's what's the end game for it? Why aren't the religious leaders, these pseudo pastors and preachers, why aren't they out there condemning the black on black violence? But they jump all over. You know, one in every you know thousand cop shootings. Yeah, black guy. What's, yeah. What's the end game? Well, the uh, the narrative. I, I don't know whose agenda it is. I asked this to the guy that runs, um, what the, he's always on Fox. What the hell is he? has got a red beard. The Media Research Center. It's like a watchdog group that keeps an eye on like left wing bias. I, my question, Mark, was how did the, how did the libs get a hold of, why do they control the media in the first place? But I don't know what the end game is. You're right. I guess you do sell papers or whatever, um, uh, that's part of it, but but it's been going on for so long. It, it it seems like they want us at each other's throats, and um, you know, a, a distraction. Yeah, Brent Bozell is the guy. Um, Brent Bozell is the guy that uh, he's an American conservative writer, and he founded Media Research Center. I actually interviewed him. I was hosting Dennis Miller show. I can't. I don't even remember the answer when I said, "Why does the media skew a liberal in the first place?" I can't even remember. He gave me about a ninety minute answer, and I. I retain nothing of it, but uh, and, I, go ahead, Mark. Then, go ahead. And then also, Nick, not to get all Catholic on you, but what, what about <laughs> the numbers? What, what about the numbers of all the mass abortions? You know, in those parts of the country too, man. I mean, come on, they're killing. Ah, yeah, no, I know. It's I, I uh, not even touched that. Yeah, no, I know. It's uh, but I, you know, I fly thirty weeks a year, so I don't care how many babies die. Um, 
<laughs> no, hey, one more thing. <laughs> I'm I swear my girls, my my girls gonna come across my jaw if I ever say situation again. <laughs> <laughs> I love hearing a guy from. <laughs> All right, Mark. Thanks, buddy. Take it easy. Uh, for the love of Pete. One minute left. You well, let's ta- we'll take one more. Jeff in Buffalo. Hey, how you doing, Jeff? Uh, uh, Jeff. Go ahead. All right. Well, um, the cop series, like, as long as, as long as you listen to the cops, there's no reason why you should get shot at all. And in recent years, there have been a couple shootings where a person, whatever race, they get shot while their hands are vis- easily visible. The cop just freaks out. Yeah, a little bit. It's usually a rookie, but most, a lot of them. Their hands weren't visible, or they moved their hands, or did something. Uh, of course, that, absolutely. Like, it, yeah, because the cops not going to wait for you to. Oh, you, I'm just blowing on my wallet. They're not going to wait to see if it is actually a wallet. They're going to protect themselves and the people around. That's yeah. their job. Well, exactly, There's, Jeff. But but now you're putting things into context and you're painting a real picture. We can't have that in the media. We just have to keep reinforcing the idea that this uh, this United States is the most racist country and uh, if you're a young black male you're in danger when you leave your house which is such fucking horseshit it's so racist this country there's millions of black and brown people trying to sneak in every day for the last i don't know how many years nobody can seem to refute that one but uh, thanks for the call i gotta take a break uh we'll come back there's a lot a lot more calls on this uh we'll talk about heather mcdonald uh, did they even mention the book in the article the name of the what the hell is it? Can you Google that for me? Find out what Heather McDonald's book is. Uh, she was, she's been pushing it for a while. It came out like a year ago. But she, uh, uh, from the City Journal, with Heather McDonald's contributing editor, uh, find out what her book is. And uh, I'll come back and uh, we'll take more calls. 866-969-1969. Sit tight, kids. Currently talking about uh, Heather McDonald. Uh, she has a book by this called The War on Cops, How the New Attack on Law and Order Makes Everyone Less Safe. Came out in June of 2016. You can get it for like, what, six bucks now? Six, nine bucks on. But all based on all statistics, hard facts that you might want to bring up when you're arguing with your nitwit friends who are still upset about the thick ankle dog face losing the election. <laughs> Don't you move, you motherfucker. I'll blow your brains out. <laughs> That's my dad. When I try to sneak in the house in high school. So I tell time I came home drunk. I mean, with about, you know, I'm talking, I'm talking you're in shape. You're a s- s- junior in high school, sophomore. You drink two six packs and I come home. I'm like, oh, parents are in bed. I'm going to watch uh I'm going to watch the uh, Tonight Show model with Johnny Carson. Oh, is that an Elio's pizza? I'll put that in the uh, I'll put that in the toaster oven, which I did. I'll go downstairs, watch a monologue, and I'll come up, and the, the pizza will be done. Cut to my father shaking me, me opening my eyes. It's daylight out. <laughs> He's holding the Elio's pizza. It's the size of a wallet. It's pitch black with smoke coming off it. And he literally got me by the throat. I almost burnt the fucking house to the ground. Still got my coat on. Heard the first two jokes. hi Heard the first two jokes. And passed out. I wake up. <laughs> is that not the scariest? Your dad's in your face. Your coat is still on. I didn't even get that far one time. I turned on the oven, passed out. Just had the oven on all night long. Same thing. 450 degrees. <laughs> I didn't put it in. Yeah, but that's an oven. That's not going to burst into flames. <laughs> Fucking toaster oven. No, I know. The wiring. They had like freshmen in high school do it. <laughs> Fucking retarded. Get eight bucks and a slap the. Why are you going to say that? <laughs> but, uh, you know. Dustin in Alberta, line eight. Dustin, what's happening? Hey, Nick. How's it going today? Good. How are you doing, sir? How are you doing, sir? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I was just thinking to myself. All those facts and that information being in a book is not going to reach the right people. Oh, that sounds kind of racist. Uh, well, but maybe. No, but you know, you, you know, um, 
She's on. Uh, she made the rounds when it came out, like on the, all the on the you know CNN. I think all of them actually Fox. I saw her on Fox News a few times, and um, but you're right. A lot of people, and uh, I know you're kind of making a, a a racial crack there, but a lot of people, even well-read white people who lean left, wouldn't pick up this book. And you know why they won't pick it up? You can't handle the truth. That's why. <laughs> Yeah, the so, truth is a, a hard thing to, to stomach sometimes, isn't it? It really is, especially in this country when it comes to the issue of race. But I really would like to see these NFL guys who have the uh, they have the bully pulpit, they have the uh, you know the famous, the high profile guys who could get the word out, and you don't hear any of them saying why why you know why are we killing each other? And 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 eventually when they do get to that conversation, it goes back to why. <laughs> You know, insufficient schools, funding, blah, 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 blah. But, uh, well, you know. I think the most part for the NFL, they're just doing what's popular. They don't care about the facts. They're yeah. just doing what's popular for them. No, you're right. Especially this. Uh, you know, Trump said sons of bitches, and they use that as a jumping off point. Oh, how fucking. You're calling their mothers bitches. Shut your fucking hole. We all know um, they be hoes. I mean, oh, come on. I'm kidding, folks. Relax up there. Uh, no, but Trump was, you know, <laughs> he could have delivered it better, but the, the, but it's just silly. And it turned into an anti-Trump thing. So is what it turned into. So thank you for the call, uh, Dustin in Alberta, where there are, I think, six black people that reside there in that city. You are correct, sir. But I would like to see these guys, and I said there's a lot of black players in the NFL who do good. They do a lot of stuff for their communities and stuff, you know. Look at like OJ. He went back to his community, cut his wife's white throat. I mean, stuff like that. (laughs) Brendan just looked like somebody I know. I can't even say who. He just made a face of, it's so funny. I can't can't discuss it right now, but he's a very funny guy and... Uh, look, let's take a look at CNN. Look at, they're interviewing a, a, a black guy with a black turtleneck and a big gold chain around the outside of the turtle. I'm sure he's saying some nice things about Trump. And He's a safety and, for the Eagles, Mal, uh, Malcolm Jenkins. Oh, Jenkins. Is that Jenkins? Yeah. And I'm sure he's on the side of who? Do I even have to fucking ask? It's a town hall they're having. It's called Patriotism, the Players, and the President. Jesus Christ, CNN, you guys are just disgusting. Cooper Anderson, you big gobbler. I don't know. All right, Andy, I, 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 I just don't know. Bill in Kentucky. Bill? What's going on, Nick? How do you feel about this, Bill? I mean, uh, the statistics uh, sort of refute everything that this uh, this uh, racial injustice that Colin Kaepernick sort of brought up. Uh, uh, the statistics in this book by Heather McDonald say otherwise. Well, I haven't read the book or know the statistics, but... Every time I turn on the news at night, there's like at least six shootings a night. Yeah. And it's all black on black crime, man. And so, you know, they're wanting to tell me that black lives matter, but they don't believe it themselves. <laughs> you know, because if they did, they wouldn't be shooting each other over a, a dice game or, you know, <laughs> there was a there was a three year old kid shot because somebody pulled the trigger uh, that last year, killed a three year old, caught in a crossfire over a dice game. Yeah. A no, dice game. No, every city has a every city has a story like that. New York, every Christ. But no, you're absolutely you're absolutely right. Um, and the only time that the Al Sharptons of the world or the Jesse Jacksons uh, or the CNNs want to get involved is when the, when that cop is the cop is white and the victim is black, and that that shows how they're so full of shit. And it really is a shame. It's a shame to, in the United States of America, the the richest country on the planet. Um, uh, but w- haven't we exhausted all other arguments? So isn't it time for them to look within? When I say them, I mean the libs who, you know, the Rahm Emanuels of the world who, uh, you know, That's, right? Absolutely, man. I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. But, I mean, you know, there's, there's, no, there's, no, uh, there's no foundation. There's no pride. You know, they, they always talk about respect, respect, but they don't even have respect for each other, but they want somebody else to respect them. You right. Know? And I'm a Marine, and, uh, you know, respect is not given. It's earned. That's right. Know? So Absolutely right, that's Bill. My, that's my soapbox. Man. All right. Thank you. Have thanks, a good one, Nick. Thanks Love for your show. service. It's true. Nobody wants to see this happen to any community. It's fucking sad. 
little girls on a bus, and all of a sudden a bullet comes. I mean, the ignorant level, the, 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 the killing in Chicago that's been going on for the last couple of years rivals anything that goes on like in, in Kabul, in these Middle Eastern towns. It's unbelievable. And somebody, uh, you know, because the, it's not at the hands of a white cop. <sighs> Leonard in Georgia, our friend Leonard. Leonard, what's going on? Hey, Brother Nick. You've been talking some good stuff this evening. You're doing great on your show. I want to give you a perspective, a uh, secondhand perspective. My, my brother is uh, an officer in Georgia. Okay. And he I can't say what agency, but he can chase you anywhere he wants to in that whole state. Now, the way he handles the situation is just like the other callers was talking about, just using common sense. And he'll shoot you. He don't care what color you are. And he'll also treat you with respect. He don't care what color you are. But it right. all boils down. It boils down to the way that you handle the situation, which we already know that. However, I say that to bring this point up. Let what it. the statistics? Hello. Go ahead. I'm here. There was a pause. I believe no matter what the stats are, um, don't bother them with the truth. Don't bother them with the facts. They have their narrative. They'll stick to it. That's my comment. Yes, you're absolutely right. You, you cut out there, but I think you're talking about the, the way the media. Um, yeah. Yeah, they cherry pick. And they've been doing this, like I said, since I was in my 20s. They cherry pick the stories that fit their narrative. And it really, even when I, I like before I got political or followed any of this stuff, I, I realized that that was dangerous. And I used to look at my buddies and go, are you going to tell me? Some white kid wasn't shot tonight by a black uh, or whatever. And, and, and I'm like, Jesus, they're going to create. And, and it, it, it's it been growing exponentially. And it's coming to fruition now. People have bought into it. So hopefully, you know, oh, yeah. you know, hopefully it'll change. I don't know what's going to change it, though. Thanks, Lennon, for the call. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. It really is. Uh, it's um, an abomination. Abomination in a country like this to have kids being and again i'll say it again and again it's it starts with mommy and daddy you gotta have a mommy and a dad oh that's old-fashioned horse shit oh right look at the statistics gotta have especially a dad you gotta have a dad figure who's gonna crack you in the face when you score a touchdown and you grab your crotch in youth football somebody's gotta go look fella don't do that Let's go to Paul in Pennsylvania. Paul, what's up? Well, good evening, Nick. How are you? Thanks for hanging on, Paul. Busy night. Oh, it's no problem. Um, uh, first of all, you uh, you didn't do your tagline tonight. I didn't do what? Your tagline, your motto. Straight white male. I haven't heard it at all tonight. Ah, I forgot to. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's, that's how you build uh, <laughs> what do you call it, uh, audience by having a tagline. I think you're right, Paul. I, I, I think... Uh, well, yeah, I should make that a permanent part of the show. Although I am uh, no longer a straight white male. I, I'm transgender. You got to be kidding. Yes, a couple, a couple nights ago, I decided uh, I had to use the uh, men's room. There was a long line. I said, well, I'm going to be Karen tonight. And I went into the ladies' room and, <laughs> and I peed in the sink. Oh, oh boy. Anyway, um, I called about... Uh, uh, that uh, report you're talking about with um, that lady there, Anthony was on um, when he was back with O and A. He was talking about the same report. Now he gives all these facts out, and he said, "You trying to tell people that they don't listen? It doesn't um, go along with what their story is and how they feel about something. So they don't listen. They just start they shut down. And said, I'm not listening. I don't care about facts." Yeah, no, they they come back with, "Well, you're racist if you believe that. Or you're bigoted," that, and and they shut down the discussion, and. Um that, that, yeah, that's, that's a huge problem, and it's been going on forever. And they really don't want to hear numbers that don't fit their narrative. And that's how we've got to where we are. That's why the issue of race is so messed up. I mean, they, the, they've been fucking telling this lie over and over again. And like I said, it became the truth. So now when you have a discussion about race, it starts at a weird point. If you're white and you're discussing with somebody who disagrees, it starts that you're already bigoted and you're already racist because you're... That's where it starts. So uh, thanks for the... Thanks, Paul, for oh, the call. I just was. I, um, okay. I called to say that uh, um, Judge Roy Moore, yeah, uh, one hundred percent 
Dude is awesome. Absolutely awesome. I don't like the guy from New York. I would be okay if um, he came out and said that homosexuality is an abomination, and I'd be good with it. <laughs> okay, thanks, Paul. I personally have no problems with homosexuality. I really don't. Well, there's some perverted shit. You know the shit I try to do in college to girls? I can, <laughs> should be arrested on the spot. I don't. I really believe you're born that way, and I don't. It doesn't affect. And I'm, again, I'm not trying to just be PC here. It really doesn't. Just don't do it on my fucking lawn at 3 in the morning like this couple did in L.A. that I threw Heineken bottles at. No, I lived in West Hollywood one night, and uh, which is a very, very gay. Yeah, very, very gay. And um, me and my girlfriend in bed, and all of a sudden, this is like 2 in the morning, okay? I have I live on the first floor. I have glass sliding doors on the first. There's an alley behind my building with glass sliding doors that open. A, it's perfect because I'm going to break in my apartment. All of a sudden, two in the morning, I hear glass smashing, and it's getting louder coming down the alley. And it, you, I'm hearing hit, shit hit the ground. Glass. We both get out of bed. I, I, we, I was laying next to my bed, ready to either either sprint out or whatever. I, I thought somebody was coming in, kicking like apartment windows in, and I thought we were next. And I've never been so. Fun. Call the friggin' cops. <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you. So and the guy brought up. Um, you know, it was a gay couple, it turns out, were having a fight on the balcony at the building across the, and they, one of them was throwing, emptying the fridge and just throwing wine bottles, full <laughs> jugs of, we went out there the next day, full jugs of milk, and then there was a bunch of, like, gay magazines all over the, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why this has to do with what uh, the guy just brought up, but, but, but no, I was defending the, the gay thing, that's the only time it bothered me that night there. I woke up and there was eggs, glass, full bottles of wine all over my all over my little patio thing. Scared the living shit out of me. West Hollywood. And if I was anti-gay, would I have picked West Hollywood? You know, live next to me. I told you. What's his name? Hedberg. Hedberg. Mitch Hedberg. What an interesting place, West Hollywood. And then there was a guy beating his girlfriend up. I, I confronted him by the pool one night. I could hear him fucking smacking around like twice a month. And I finally fucking, I thought he was going to kill me. Try to do the right thing. And those are the people who end up dead, by the way, and you stick his face into a domestic, uh, typical California. He's like this. We have our fists up. He goes, what's your schooling? Meaning everybody's into fucking karate and shit. <laughs> I go, I got a BA in fucking business. I don't know what you <laughs> went to UMaine, play some ball. What are you fucking, what's this, a job interview? School. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. What's your schooling? Like Tiger Claw. I got a BA uh, in I got a BA in uh, marketing. How about you? He goes. Well, I got a two point eight in uh, systems management. <laughs> For the love of Christ, I'm all over the place here. But uh, Dustin in Toronto wants to give a shout out to a, a, a cop friend. It's Dustin. Hi. It's um. I just want to give a shout out. Give a shout out to uh, Jim Oaks. He just passed away a couple of days. He was uh, one of the few good cops up here up north that supported civilian gun ownership, and uh, it was very sad to lose him. What now? What happened? He he wasn't killed in a line of duty. No, um, uh, I haven't got the full story yet, but it was a medical complication. Medical. How long was he a yeah. cop, Dustin? Um, I want to say about twenty years. Wow. Yeah. He was still a young man. Well, props to you know. To his family yep. and uh yeah yep and uh one, one more thing i want to add yeah i was young and dumb and did a lot of stupid stuff when i was young yeah and the cops harassed me and guess what now that i'm an older man i'm happy they did because i was the exact person they needed to harass yeah i mean uh, even today when i get pulled over which i did last year coming home from a gig on the jersey turn i, I pull over i i put my overhead light on so he can see my hands. I put both hands on the wheel and I waited till the guy, you know, asked my license and registration. Yeah, it's really kind of simple, actually. Yep, yep. I, I take my keys out and put them on the dashboard. Okay, you're better than shot. I am, Dustin. <laughs> yeah, well, up here in Canada, as soon as they run your plates, if you own guns, the government knows about everything. So as soon as they run my plates, they see gun-owning conservative white male and they're like, yeah, this is someone I might have to shoot today. Is that what it says when they pull up your information? Conservative white male? <laughs> well, it says gun owner, so that explains the rest. Yeah, no, it's right. All right. Yeah. Well, Canada's uh, turning into a socialist shithole. We know that anyway. Oh, my God. Uh, at least when your president opens his mouth, yeah. 
He says something. Every time my pre- our prime minister opens his mouth, it sounds like an episode of Care Bears. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dustin. Okay. You have a good day there, brother. All right, brother. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks for the call. We got calls from everywhere, don't we? Right. Oh, Canada, Canada, say. <laughs> please, please, don't you move, you motherfucker. I'll blow your brain. I know it was the cops. If it was anybody else, I would have been dead. And then she uses the phone. Right after I told that dumb bitch with a silly hat, now to use the phone. What does she do? What does she do? <laughs> Steve in Tampa got his ass beat by the cops, but uh, he was being a bit of a, uh, how we say, chooch. Steve. What's up, Nick? What's yeah, up? man, listen. Like, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm a white dude. Uh, I'm very well aware. I, I'm six foot six, you know, 250 pounds. Ooh. Cops are on guard. They're, 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 they already have their fucking guards up <laughs> right. when I'm around. So right. I'm, I'm one false move from being the, the, the amount of times I've had fucking tasers pointed at me. Yeah. You know, for, for just, well, you know, I've been arrested a few times for some bullshit, but uh, <laughs> I was being an asshole, you know? Like, yes. like they, never, they didn't beat me like Rodney King. Right. But they smashed my fucking, you know, I, I went to the fucking to jail with a black eye that I didn't have before I got arrested. <laughs> right. You know, they, they, as I'm getting in the car, they, you know, grabbed the back of my head. Oh, let me help you in. Ah, you know, right off the fucking roof of the car. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, I, I, I'm very aware because of my size that I have to, you know, I get pulled over, put the fucking lights on. So they can see my hand. Yeah. You know, you, you just got to fucking, you know. Yeah. You got you, you to gotta babe. Thanks for the call, Steve. And and look, I'm not saying and look, I'm not saying these cases where cops you don't know you don't know what their past is with black people on, on or off duty or whatever. And, and 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 of course there's bad ones out there. But to to make this a national movement where people are holding arms before an NFL game is just fucking utterly ridiculous. And that's what it was about according to Colin and originally it was about you know, cops, brutality, and and again, he soaked it in from the media. Where do you think he got his information? You think Colin Kaepernick researched it? He's got socks on with pigs, cops being depicted as pigs on his socks. So, again, not to, not, not to uh, minimize people who have been hassled, because they have, you know? But I'm sick of, I'm watching the other night, there's, who was it? it? Was Tucker Carlson arguing with a guy who lives in D.C., a black like lawyer. Guy had a nicer suit on than Tucker did, you know. Oh, I've been pulled over. You don't know what it's. He kept using. You don't know what it's like to be black. You can't relate because you're not black. That's the other argument. It's like you know, oh, you're from a different planet. I got whacked in the back of the legs with a billy club a bachelor party. A brawl broke out at the. Uh, Golden Banana when I was in high school. The strip club in my town. The Golden Banana. It's still there. And a big... We were, it wasn't even... We weren't involved. We were just watching. And a cop... I guess I got too close to the fight. It looked like I was... And he... Right... The, yeah, but right behind the knee with a... Cl- Oof. <laughs> I didn't argue or anything. I went, ah! I'm again, I got out of the way. <laughs> Standing there watching a fight with a hard on I got from the club. <laughs> Brought a stripper home with one hand from that club. That's a true story. She was hiding it with her veils on stage. You get home, she's missing like half her hand. Come on. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> Absolutely. Stunning face. Fucking missing. Yeah, sure. I don't, huh? don't bother me. I didn't care. I didn't care. Yeah, why not? So let me see that stump. Put some, lube, put some lube on it. <laughs> I put some lube on the stump. Then I had to reach into my... Uh, kitchen sink i had dropped a, it was an onion block in the uh <laughs> i use it as a plunger i had dropped a tennis ball down a toilet back back after this you're listening to the nick DePaulo show on faction talk sirius xm 103 Sunday, take that music down. To thank you, this Sunday on Fox, it's the new comedy Ghosted, starring Adam Scott from Parks and Recreation and Big Little Lies, and Craig Robinson from The Office. They play an ex-cop and a fired 
science professor who are forced together as a badly mismatched pair to investigate unexplained paranormal activity in Los Angeles, all while uncovering a larger mystery that could threaten the existence of the human race. Fox says it's like a comedic version of the X-Files. Ghosted is being called the most anticipated new comedy of the fall. Nerdist and Hypable say it's hilarious. And Zimbio.com calls it totally bonkers. Do they really? Marie Claire says Ghosted definitely brings the LOLs. Fox says there's no other comedy like it on television, cable, or even streaming. Ghosted, starring Craig Robinson and Adam Scott, premieres Sunday after the Simpsons' Game of Thrones-inspired season premiere on Fox. That's this Sunday only on Fox. Who wrote that? Here's what you missed on Covino and Rich. By the way, Spy, you look up boobies, they're fucking amazing. They're b- birds with blue feet. I love boobies. More impressive? Oh, yeah. boobies are so great. More impressive than, uh, more impressive than oh some my God. real boobies. Oh, I'm not even kidding you. Unless boobies? It, unless it's boobies really are amazing. Unless, I unless, love it, unless it's a perfect set of boobs. Look at that. i rather look at photos blue-footed of boobies. Oh, blue-footed boobies. Unbelievably amazing. Covino and Rich. Weekdays at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. On Faction Talk 103. The ultimate individual game becomes a team sport when the USA's top golfers, including Jordan Spieth, Dustin Johnson, and Ricky Fowler. Into the bottom, Ricky Fowler with three in a row. Join forces to square off against a group of the world's best, made up of the likes of Jason Day, Adam Scott, and Hideki Matsuyama. It's the 2017 President's Cup, and you can hear it on Sirius XM. Coverage starts tomorrow at noon Eastern on PGA Tour Radio, Sirius 208, XM92, and on the Sirius XM app. Message and data rates may apply. If you're considering going back to school, ask yourself the following questions. Do you need the flexibility to take classes on your schedule? Do you have college credits you need transferred? Do you want to earn a quality degree? from a world-renowned university? If you answered yes to any of these questions, Arizona State University is the perfect school for you. Arizona State University offers over 100 highly ranked degree programs 100% online. You'll earn the same degree as you would on campus from wherever you are on your schedule. Plus, ASU Online accepts most transfer credits. For information, text LEADER to 79645. Learn for yourself why the Wall Street Journal ranks ASU fifth in the nation for producing the best qualified graduates and why ASU ASU Online's bachelor degrees are ranked in the top 1% by U.S. News and World Report. Learn to grow, learn to succeed, and learn to thrive at Arizona State University. To learn more about ASU Online degrees, text LEADER to 79645. That's L-E-A-D-E-R to 79645. Cancellation fee may apply. Subject to eligibility. Not available in Alaska, Missouri, and Washington. Waiting period and deductible apply. Coverage provided and administered by Warrantech Corporation or its affiliates. Not affiliated with any manufacturer dealership. Visit tocowarranty.com for complete terms and conditions. You've been driving your car for a few years now. It's old enough to make you a little nervous, but you'd like to hold off buying a new one as long as possible. Has your manufacturer's warranty expired? Is it about to? What if you lost your transmission today? Would it wipe out your savings or max out your credit card? Truth is, you may gamble yourself deeper into debt. Protect yourself from big, unexpected car repair bills with an affordable vehicle protection plan from Toco Warranty. It's easy and affordable. You pick the coverage, you even choose your own repair shop. When it happens, and it will, your plan pays your mechanic directly so you don't have to. Roadside service, towing, and rental car benefits are included. All for a fraction of what you'd pay out of pocket. Drive carefree with a simple phone call. 800-262-6938. That's 800-262-6938. 800-262-6938. We're clearing out summer inventory at the Yellow Tag Clearance Sale at Lumber Liquidators. Take 20% off Woodlook waterproof floors with coupon, like top-rated Avella Woodlook Tile and Click Ceramic Plank. Get 10 to 23% off all Dream Home X2O water-resistant laminates and 10% off all Builder's Pride and Virginia Millworks pre-finished hardwood. More from 39 cents and take an extra 10% off clearance at your local store. Plus special financing. Look for the Yellow Tag Clearance deals at Lumber Liquidators today. Every day, Covino and Rich dominate the airwaves. But did you know they dominate the internet as well? well? Keep up with the most interactive show out there. And follow at Covino and Rich on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Hit us up with the hashtag, The Show, and be a part of the action. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Covino and Rich. Covino and Rich. Weekdays at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. On Sirius XM's Faction Talk 103. 
Jim Norton and Sam Roberts are live every morning from 8 a.m. to 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when they're not on the air, you can still enjoy all the content they've been pumping out with Sirius XM On Demand. What a time to be alive. Download the Sirius XM app and never miss another moment of Jim and Sam. Catch up or give your favorite bits another listen. We're double belling. Oh, with a bell. This is hell. That's right, hell's bells. <laughs> That's Jim and Sam On Demand. Available on the Sirius XM app. Got pass in pocket. Got battle. I am gonna use it. And now, back to the Nick DiPaolo show on Sirius XM. Faction Talk 103. Gonna make you, make you, make you know this. You know how I make girls notice me? A bad toupee. This song reminds me of when I went spring break, 1980 in high school. Go down to Fort Lauderdale, got all fucked up, lose my wallet on the second day. Yeah. How about this? I get home a week later, go to my mailbox. There it is in an envelope with the money still intact. Believe that shit? You shouldn't. I just made it up. No, it's a true story. No, I imagine you know that who sent shit? it? I can't remember. I want to say it was a woman. A woman, I'd say she's about 400 pounds. She put a picture in there of herself, spreading her ass. Oh, no, I don't, uh, I don't, it was a woman. It was a, uh, uh, or the cops. They turned it into the cops. Day. I can't remember. But there it was. Didn't even take money off a of postage. Gave me a lot of, um, it, it was uh, uplifting. You know, I was like, ah, oh, I feel more upbeat about humanity. And, you know, and then about, I'd say I put on CNN that night and they just ruined everything. Wolf Blitzer was 11 then. Still had the beard, though. In dog years. In dog years. In Mamaluke years. Hey, did you guys hear about the uh, Yankees uh, fan? We, 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 you can, we, we're done with the uh, the race talk. I'm tired. I'm tired. A guy got ejected from Yankee Stadium last night for sign stealing. <laughs> Not doing it the high-tech way like the Sox did with their Apple Watches. Uh, the fan uh, was ejected from Yankee Stadium for yelling out information on pitch location to the Yankees' Gary Sanchez while he was hitting in the eighth inning. The fan was apparently watching the Rays catcher, you know, Tampa, catcher shift his body to set a target for the next pitch and then yelling out what he, what he had just observed. <laughs> I'm loving this. Uh, but after the fan's booming voice was heard by Sanchez, the Rays catcher... Wilson Ramos, and the home plate umpire, Dan Bellino. He was pointed out to stadium security, the fan was, and removed from the stadium. The fan has not been identified. A lot of people thought it was Bernie Sanders. <laughs> He's setting up outside. He's setting up inside. <laughs> He's throwing the ball on the inside of the plate. Move over. Um, yeah, he was pointed out uh, by state and removed from the, the So... Ramos, the catcher, confirmed that the fans' observations were accurate. <laughs> that was not professional, he said. Since when does a fan have to act professional? He told the AP after Tuesday's game. If you come to the game, you're asked to enjoy the game. Everybody's supposed to see the ball and just react with pitches. So to me, it's like cheating. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know where I stand on this one. Like I said to you, Andy, if I went there tonight and just started yelling shit out, like to, just to fuck with it, if I went, yeah, he's setting up outside <laughs> and just making it up, even, you know, w would they ask you, ask me to leave? I think so. Why? <laughs> I don't know. It seems a slippery slope. What else could you do to, to get ejected? Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, no, I mean, as far as helping the team. Yeah. What what other things can you do? Uh, yeah, it's from the fan point of view. I don't think there's too much. Is is this the first time that anybody's ever tried to? That's hilarious. No, I think back in the fifties, is in San Francisco was famous for that, or maybe not San Francisco yet. New York Giants, where they had somebody in the outfield. That's where it all started. Somebody in the stands would with binoculars would read the catches. Yeah, but it wasn't a fan, right? It was a, it was somebody. Related somebody to the, the stands, organization. Yeah, I don't know. This I might just, be the first time. I don't know. I just, first of all, was it being, was it even affect, you know, was it, was the guy affecting the game? 
either way. Like Sanchez says, it doesn't matter because you don't know if it's a slider or a fastball right. coming. And we already talked about this a couple of weeks ago. A lot of play when, when the Red Sox were stealing signs. A lot of hitters say, I don't want to know what's coming. I want to react yep. to it. Even if they tell you it's going to be a curve, you know. Yeah, you a lot of times it's not. You can't trust anybody in the audience. Huh? You, know, you can't trust somebody. In the <laughs> a guy's got ten beers in him. He's setting up outside. <laughs> so, so you you hang out over the plate and you get drilled in the head because <laughs> the guy had twenty Heinekens. <laughs> He's setting up inside. Guy seeing double. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Kurt in Kentucky says he got a new treatment for my sore <laughs> my sore knees. Go ahead, Kurt. What's up, man? What up, brother? Uh, sitting up here in freaking St. Louis trying to get my trailer unloaded. Okay. Uh, hey, have you done the jail injections yet? Uh, what's it called? Jail. Jail. D E L. No, I haven't. Have you done the cortisone? Uh, no, I haven't. Well, hell, you ain't got bad knees, man. <laughs> Who said I do have bad knees? You always complain about your damn knees. Yeah, the bones are rubbing together, but that's just cartilage wearing away, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know it. They usually do cortisone. I was going to tell you, there's a cortisone last year, three months for the new treatment. Now. I've been getting done. It's called jail, and they put that jail in there last year, six months. Oh, oh, no kidding. Yeah, it's funny you it's funny you call about that, Kirk, because today I did, uh, I did P90X, the plyometrics, the hardest one. And, I, you know, I stopped doing that about a year ago because there was, like, Blue smoke coming off my knees there. Uh, so, I, but I did it today. I jumped around and tonight walking, even walking from the parking garage to here, I could feel my knees rubbing together. So, uh, so I'll, I'll look that stuff up. Thanks, Kurt. I hear you, brother. I, uh, you always ask us drivers what we haul, and you ain't never asked me what I haul. What do, what do you haul, Kurt? Blood, guts, blood, guts, hair, assholes, and elbows, and all parts, animal parts. Oh, I I thought you were a serial killer. I thought you were describing no, no. dead de- dead hookers in the back of your truck. Ask. <laughs> anyway, man, I want to run that value about your knees, and uh, I am I'm working on handing the running as your co as your partner there running for president. All right, appreciate it, Kurt. Thank you so much. You, Jesus, that was Southern, huh? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <laughs> If I could, I'd grab this microphone and I'd beat your brains out with it because that's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. It's almost musical at the end. That's what you deserve. That's what you Google deserve. Google that. Can you go? Seriously, pull that up. Let's watch that right now. You want to see some acting? It's Manson TV movie. It's called Health the Skelter. Uh, it was a made for TV movie. And it says Steve Rails back. Put in the word monologue on the stand. You want to see some acting? And again, I did this in acting class when I first came to New York. You would have loved it, man. You would have. Picture an Italian about a focal looking like a guy doing Manson. <laughs> I could have my own I could have my own ranch on the Italian version. That's the that's the party platform today. <laughs> it's the music telling you cheer. How good an acting job was that? Yeah. Unbelievable. Gives me chills, man. And I, I like looking over at you, mouth of the words. Oh, I could have done the whole thing. <laughs> it's burned into my brain because I, I studied for like two weeks. My teacher stopped me at one point because you're hyperventilating when he's doing this. It's your children. <laughs> but that made me want to act. That, 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 I watched that movie like they, you know, re ran it. it. It's, it's Helter Skelter. And, and the guy that played Vincent Bagolsi was so good too. And, uh, but that's Steve Rails back. I don't even know if he's still alive. I always confuse him with the guy that was in um, Midnight Express. Was that him, too? Or that was somebody else. Is Railsback still alive? Still alive. 71 years Holy old. Holy moly. What a nice, juicy role, though. Huh? Man, did he nail that. Then I saw him on Full House playing a sushi <laughs> chef. <laughs> you want a California roll? Well, it's coming right at you. <laughs> this sashimi. They come at you with knives. Pretty good, huh? Not bad. Yeah. That's a good movie, if you have a chance. Watch that. I think it was called Hell to Skelter, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. 
It was uh, not long after that all that shit went down. Anyways. Those Manson family girls. Oh, I know. Some lookers. I know. When, when, when they show them that monologue and they cut to the girls, <laughs> it's like doing an open mic. It's like being in the creek and cave. There's three <laughs> chicks up front. Uh, I want to meet Andy Fiore. He's funny. <laughs> Dave, in San, Dave in Santa Monica. What's up, Dave? Hey, uh, Nick. Uh, I heard that you took acting lessons from an acting coach who taught a lot of other comics. Is that Ye true? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, a woman named Joanna Bexon mm -hmm. uh, here in New York taught, who, who taught a lot of comics. But also a guy, uh, Aaron, Sp Aaron Spicer. Uh, out when I was out in L.A. Matter of fact, he lives in Santa Monica, Dave. Really? Yeah. Aaron Spicer. Yeah. Um, he was good. He was from uh, from New York originally. And uh, he had one of the funniest lines. I did a scene in his class. I was supposed to be shaving my ex-girlfriend's legs. That's <laughs> That was the scene. We're getting back together. It was one of the fly girls from In Living Color. The, the, yeah. the black girl. Real good looking. And I'm supposed to be shaving her legs. And it, but <laughs> it's supposed to be central, the scene. <laughs> kind of central and he goes stop stop he goes nick what the fuck he goes it looks like he goes there's no sensuality that he goes what are you what are you preparing her for knee surgery <laughs> 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 which was one of the best lines ever <laughs> and then he then he came and saw me at the laugh factory and i did my uh i did my joke about uh, you know the jewish people running hollywood and the and he didn't he he, 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 he didn't like that he he goes when you quit being a dick you'll probably become famous <laughs> <laughs> But well, I, uh, I always heard that uh, you're a married man, but I heard that, that it's a good way to meet women is to take an acting class because you get to do those kind of scenes. Oh yeah, yeah, and a lot of the and a lot of the um, a lot of the acting teachers are kind of voyeurs. They like to set you up with, you know. I, I, and my friend Joanna, I thought she had a little of that, and she would always set me up with this uh, Italian girl. Um, really, I can't remember what her name was. I called her Phil. Um, no, <laughs> but she was. <laughs> You, but yeah, there's a lot, a lot of that. The teachers used to love the. They, they have the, you know, they're perverted. They're, they're fucking. They're into the arts and they like that type of stuff. But yeah, guys would definitely sign up, especially, especially in L.A. You go on an audition in L.A. You know, you. I, I went on some audition. I came for a commercial. There was a Tropicana commercial being. Oh. I, I walked down a gauntlet. I'm not kidding you. A hallway with uh, with seats on both sides. A gauntlet of uh, like 20 girls on on both sides in bikinis. <laughs> Picture L.A. with some of the you know and, the uh, orange yeah. juice. So I went into so I went into my audition with an erection, which wasn't appropriate. I was I was uh, I was auditioning for a kindergarten teacher, and uh, <laughs> so it really fucked me out of the job. But yeah, uh, Joanna Bexton's a great coach, and Aaron Spies did a good job. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So it helped you out. It it really did. There's not much you need to know. There's enough. At one point, you know, one of them said, "Yeah, this is bullshit." But there's a little bit of technique, and you know what they help you with, uh, like your mentality going into an audition, and and th that's where it's good. And uh, you know, you do scenes, you do uh, you do scenes, um, and uh, yeah, it, it's. But uh, you know, it's like anything else. Some people have it, some don't. So right. I heard Robert Mitchum said that taking an acting class is like trying to learn how to be tall or something like yes. that. Yes. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, who told, was it Brando that told James Dean, don't you dare go to an acting class? They'll fuck you, fuck you all up or something. That sounds right. Somebody told James Dean that, too. And they said that, you know who else? Uh, they said that to Larry Storch, an F-troop. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, and look all right. at his success. Look you know. at him. Come on. He was tremendous. All right, David. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Nick. All right. <laughs> Larry Storch, my go-to. <laughs> Brandon's like, what the fuck is F Troop? It was a tremendous show in the seventies. Based on the uh what was it? What kind what were they? Soldiers? What kind of soldiers? I think so. I, uh, you know, they they rode horses, those soldiers. They were dressed up like Boy Scouts. Uh, there's a specific word that I can't uh like not cavalier. Or cavalry or something. Ca cavalry, like a yeah, cavalry. Yeah. And the Fagawi tribe. They used to run into these Indians that were played by Sicilians, by the way. If you look in the <laughs> you look a lot of the guys were Sicilian that were playing the Fagawi tribe. That's the big joke where the Fagawi they would get lost. They were but they were funny Indians, you know? No, it's a good show. It really is. The seventies, man, I'm telling you. What are you doing? Boy, a couple of Indians are gonna skin my balls. Something G Hartifact. Why don't nobody never tell me nothing? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you ever tell me nothing? <laughs> Boy, look at while. CNN just marching out black yeah, person yeah. after black person, all with uh, pusses on their face. Oh, Michael Bennett, there you go. Who would fucking, uh, after what I, oh, I can't even take it. Please, shut that off.
Put on Rachel Maddow. I'd rather whack it to her than watch fucking Michael Bennett spew his anti-American horseshit while he wears his $8,000 jogging suit. Hell of a ball player, by the way, and I wouldn't say it to his face because he'd chase me down. You know, my knees. <sighs> Anyways, I'm glad I brought up that Yankees thing. It took off like a fart in a fucking <laughs> astronaut really? suit. <laughs> it really generated some calls. I'm going to go to Yankee Stadium, I'm telling you, during the playoffs and just go, he's lining up outside. Here comes a knuckleball. I want to see if they tell me to leave. <laughs> Ooh, my stomach. Anybody else get the shit from eating salmon? I don't eat it. You don't like salmon? No. I like it. It grew on me. I didn't like it at first. Yeah, I but uh, it always, I don't know what it is. It's very rich. And uh, every time I get it, uh, my stomach, it sounds like I have a fetus in there trying to get out. Like Charlie Manson wants to. <laughs> Mark in New Hampshire. Mark, he's got a wallet story. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, well, first of all, it's uh, uh, Forrest Tucker, right, was in the F troop, and he was supposed to be <laughs> packing. I figured you'd like that information, so you know, you've joined the Gay Liberation Front on us. Oh, that's anyway. right. No, yeah, I remember that rumor. He yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, um, hey, don't cut me. Say, oh. Hey, shut up. I'm talking. Yeah, yes, sir, Mr. Nick Dip. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking... I haven't talked to you since you switched time, so go right ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, Mark. Go ahead. I was, uh, was going to say the uh, the Dark Side of the Diamond, right? It's a book about all the old baseball players. Yeah. And when you were talking about the balls hitting people in the head, yeah. this guy clocks this lady. So they're taking her out on a stretcher, and they restart the game. <laughs> yeah. He clocks another one and hits her again on the <laughs> on the uh, stretcher. But anyway, when you said the golden banana, right? Me yes. and my buddy Johnny, and we're going up to get a quick beer, and you hear, Karak! Woo! We turn, and it clocks my buddy right square in that you could see the threads on his forehead i said johnny we can go to the hospital or we can go to the combat zone <laughs> in the combat zone i lose my wallet and i get it mailed back from the combat zone are you kidding me i am not kidding it was right after the, that italian kid the football player got murdered down oh there. yeah 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 so the, the guy Pickle. calls me and he goes he says i yeah yo, yeah i said well how much money he said oh it's over three i said well keep half of it and they all, sure enough, it came back with half the money. I couldn't believe it. But anyways, <laughs> you forgot to tell who the uh, the point guard, Obama, what university played for. Um, you don't? I think... Uh, motherfucker, you. <laughs> all, right. Uh, all right, Maggie. Uh, the other... Okay, buddy. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> I love New England. Huh? <laughs> motherfucker. Combat. Combat zone. I lost my wallet. I was getting a hand job. The combat zone was right across from Nick's. Jay Leno used to. Jay Leno opened for like a stripper in the combat zone, and he get he always tells combat zone stories. And uh, I told him my 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 buddy broke me out of hospital before I had my shoulder surgery. I had my gown under my winter coat. We went to combat zone, and I was finger popping some dancer after I bought her an eleven dollar fucking sprite. And on the way home, I started to touch my face. He goes, "Don't touch your face." It's 12 degrees out. I got my hand out the... F I got the window down. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have surgery the next morning. It's 11 degrees. The wind blowing. I got my hand out the window trying to freeze the germs off. You don't touch your... I go, why? I was like... I'm a young kid. I was like, fucking... What was I, 18? I was still in high school. <laughs> still in high school. And I still remember the stripper. She was like, uh, um, you know what... Uh, Latino. And I thought she was old, you know, looking back on it. She was, she was probably 28. I'm not made. Here's an old lady. I bought a tequila sunrise is what I bought. Yeah, it's $11. I'm like, what? $11? My buddy paid for it. And here's my buddy watching me. He's sitting at the bar. He's watching yeah. out of the corner of his eye. He's trying not to make it look obvious. Oh, my God. And then we go back to the hospital. Real tight security. We say hi to the guy. I come in, I my gowns hang out of my... What's that smell? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, they have me out, the doctor's going, <laughs> well, I'm unconscious. Hey, you're in the right place. The combat zone. Yeah, Leno always told stories about the combat zone. Right across from Nick, of course, it's all gentrified now. But um, I love that the guy got his wallet mailed back. But um, yeah. 
Let's well, make uh, Billy from L.A. our last call of the evening as we're about to wrap up the show. Hi, Bill. Hey, hello, Mr. DiPaolo. How are you doing tonight? Good, thank you. I uh, still maintain Nick and Larry 2020. <laughs> Larry the caller, Larry? Oh, yeah, I love that guy. He's something else, isn't he? Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, I just want to thank you for allowing me to use your airwaves to... Uh, promote a nonprofit organization I'm working with called Limbitless Solutions. Okay. It's a, it's a group started in a University of Central Florida providing 3D printed prosthetics for children and also adults who can't afford them. So they're looking for any financial donations or anybody who wants to 3D print prosthetics for people. They're always looking for more people to add. Well, I'm glad you got that to get the, you know, get the plug-in. Sounds like a good thing. I've, I've been doing it. My printer's been running nonstop for a past month now. And you're helping these kids out with uh, no limbs. Trying my best is what I can with what I got. Well, good for you, Bill. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you, Nick. You got it. All right. So, good night. All right. So if anybody out there can, you know, mail an elbow or a foot. No, that was actually pretty good. No. What are you laughing at? The minute he brought it up, Fiori goes into... Fiori has a problem with handicapped kids and shit. Well, you sent me that picture twice today. We, You know the kid with the shrine of Santa, the little kid with the Jay Leno face? Send money to people like us, so people like you. Which I love that little kid. He's a great spokesman. And Fiori just finds it so goddamn funny. He's kind of, kind of mean. Anyways, that's it. Thank you guys, all the callers tonight. Mark Norman tomorrow night. Come see me this Friday night at the Ridgefield Playhouse in Ridgefield, Connecticut. October 6th and 7th, Levity Live, West Nyack, New York. October 21, the Westport Inn, Westport, Connecticut. That is it. Nice job, fellas. We'll talk to you soon. Wash those filthy asses.